my friend has a knack for telling wild stories. And this one is no exception. He claims that he and a buddy once scored a giant cardboard cutout from a movie theater. It was a promotional piece from an Austin Powers movie featuring a time machine. It was massive, so big it wouldn't fit inside his friend's van. So naturally, they put it on the roof. But the wind was a problem. My friend stood on the back bumper, leaning over the top of the van to hold the cardboard cutout down as they drove. As the van picked up speed, the front of the cutout began to lift, pushed by the rushing air. So to keep it in place, my friend crawled higher and higher onto the van, eventually laying flat on top of the cutout. Then, according to him, it happened. He flew off. That's right, he claims he was lifted into the air, soaring above the van like a human kite before coming back down. Now I'm skeptical. My friend loves a bit of dramatic flair, and I suspect he just slid off the roof rather than going airborne. But it got me thinking, could rushing air really lift someone into the air like that? How fast would the van have to be going for this to be possible? Let's dig into the math, do some forensics to figure out if his story holds up, or if it's just another one of his tall tales. To find out if his story is true, we need to talk about how wind power works. And for that, we need the cubic law of wind power. The cubic law tells us that the power exerted by wind on an object is proportional to the cube of the velocity of the wind. In plainer English, this means if the wind doubles in speed, then there is eight times as much power in the wind. If the wind speed triples, then there is now 27 times more power in the wind. But more power in the wind means the more destruction it can do. A wind speed of 30 miles an hour or 46 kilometers will blow these 45 pound 20 kilogram trash cans over and move them to your neighbors. Five times that 30 mile an hour wind and we're in category four or five hurricanes and they would do something similar for an object that weighs 125 times that much and that is the weight of a car. This video shows a car being flipped over and well off the ground by winds reported by the National Weather Service to be 130 miles an hour or 210 kilometers an hour. Cars that have a large surface area are especially susceptible. Now, if you've studied some physics, the cubic law might sound surprising. One of the first equations students learn about energy in a moving object is this one, one half mv squared, which shows that the energy of a moving object is proportional to the square of its velocity. So why does wind power involve velocity cubed instead of squared? Here's how I think about it. Imagine getting hit by two dodgeballs one thrown slowly and the other at a much faster speed. The mass of the balls stay the same, so the energy they deliver is proportional to the square of their speed. But with wind, there's more to consider. As the wind speed increases, more air is hitting the object per second, so it's not just the same mass of air hitting faster, it's more mass hitting and hitting faster. Since the mass of the air is proportional to the speed, the mass in the 1 half mv squared formula gets replaced with a constant times velocity and that's what increases the exponent of velocity from 2 to 3. You can look up the full formula for the power generated by wind, but we don't need it to analyze my time machine flying friend's story, but we will derive it at the end of the video. To analyze my friend's situation, we will use a simple experiment you can do at home to mimic lying on a horizontal cardboard cutout in the wind. Take a piece of copy paper, hold it in your hands with the palms up and facing up. Hold your hands to your chest and position the long edge of the paper against your chest. If you walk briskly, then the movement of the air will lift up the paper to your chest. But we need some values if we want to use this to analyze my friend's superheroing off the van. We need the walking speed, the time it took the paper to lift up to the chest, the weight of the paper, and the surface area of the paper. Through several rounds of experiments, we found that at 2 meters per second, it takes about a third of a second for the paper to rise to the chest. The paper was a standard 20 pound piece of copy paper, which weighs 5 pounds per ream, so each paper weighs about 1 one hundredth of a pound, which is 0 0.0045 kilograms. The surface area of the paper is about 0 0.06 meters squared. Let's put all this information in a spreadsheet. At 2 meters per second, on a surface area of 0 0.06 meters squared, the wind will lift up 0 0.0045 kilograms, a height of 0 0.108 meters in one third of a second. Now we just need to start changing these values to get to the situation of my friend. He remembers the cutout being mainly a large circle that was about 7 feet tall. So I'll be conservative and use a radius of 1 meter and assume a circle. That gives the area of the cutout as 3.14 meters squared. Since power is proportional to surface area, we can multiply the weight lifted by the same factor that scales 0 0.06 to 3.14, and that is more than 52 times the surface area. So the weight the wind can lift up 
0.108 meters in one third of a second is about 52 times the weight of the paper, which is 0.2355 kilograms. The driver of the van told my friend he was going 40 to 45 miles an hour when my friend flew off. 45 miles an hour is about 20 meters per second, which is 10 times faster than the speed in the walking paper experiment of 2 meters per second. This doesn't mean we multiply the mass by 10, though. Power is proportional to the cube of the speed, remember? So that mass is not 10 times more, but 1,000 times more. Updating our values, we get that a 20 meter per second wind would lift 235 kilograms to 1.0 meters in one third of a second on the surface area of pi meters squared. 235 kilograms translates to a weight of about 517 pounds. My friend only weighed about 175 pounds. If the cardboard cutout weighed 15 pounds, then that's a total weight of 190 pounds or a mass of 86 kilograms. So at less mass, the wind could lift my friend higher in the same amount of time. 86 is a factor of 2.73 times smaller than 235 kilograms, so the distance the wind could lift that mass is 2.73 times as much. That's 0.294 meters, which is about a foot. That means my friend could be raising it about 3 feet per second or a meter per second. If the cutout was stiff enough and the front tilted up, then the wind would have easily thrown the cutout and my friend up and off the van. Man, it would have been so cool to have a video of that. The air rushing past a fast vehicle is very powerful. That is why cars are designed to be aerodynamic. I heard that at freeway speeds, about 80% of the energy used by the car to move the car forward is just to counter the resistance of the air. That air resistance is why exposed loads have to be strapped down tight. I had my own experience with something flying off my own vehicle. Once I strapped a large chair to the top of my truck so it stuck out above the roof, and I only used one strap to hold it down. Before I even hit 70 miles an hour, the wind tore it off the truck. I did some math and estimated that the wind power against the chair on the truck was like having a grown man sitting in the chair, strapped to the side of a cliff with one thin ratchet strap. It could hold if the strap was placed well, and it was good and tight, but mine wasn't placed well. And worst of all, it wasn't even my chair. It was my parents. Let's just say I wasn't their favorite child that week. As promised, here's the derivation of the wind power formula, starting with the kinetic energy formula of 1 half mv squared. Do you have any amazing stories about the power of wind? You can tell us about those in the comments. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and share our videos. Be sure to follow Math the World on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you so much for your support.